Hi, what's up, Rob? How are you doing? I'm all right, Luke. How are you? Good. Good, good. Can't complain. Nice and sunny out here. Yeah, it looks nice uh, over there. Yeah. So uh, can you just tell me a little bit about your background, I guess? I found out about you on Twitter, but just recently I stumbled across your Instagram and I, I saw a bunch of stuff just about how, I don't know, you like made your first splash on Instagram mm -hmm. before you, you started going on Twitter. So, yeah. Yeah, as far as uh, the Grounded Athlete, I started that. Three years ago, kind of like right when the China virus is getting started a little bit. Um, April, April is when I started. Um, but really, I started out, I was just making videos for, for people. Like I was, I was compiling research and I was just popping these videos out because I really thought this practice, I mean, I think this, this practice of grounding can help a lot of people. So I, uh, I spent a lot of my time compiling that research, learning everything that I could possibly learn about grounding and uh telling the world about it and then from there the sandals came about a few months later those took off as soon as as soon as i started making them which is awesome um and now here we are three years later still making the sandals still making the videos and and a lot more so uh that's how i got started but a lot of that did start on instagram and that's kind of where i started to, to gain some some popularity was a lot of the grounding having to do with like your background? Because I saw that you are like a Native American. So I think like, yeah, in so, general, um, they use a lot more like not shoes. They're just kind of like more <laughs> in nature. So yeah, and it, it, it varies between different different tribes, the kind of footwear they, they utilize, but a lot of them utilize uh, hides. So uh, animal animal hides, which are conductive if you sweat in them. Um, but uh, yeah, I was around uh, I was I was deeply enveloped in uh, Native American Lakota Lakota Sioux culture, and uh, Earth is revered as something extremely healing and something that you have to stay close to if you want to be healthy in a natural alignment with the world. Um, great spirit, as they would say, um, and I was around a lot of moccasins growing up. So a lot of a lot of my family, a lot of the people in my tribe wore moccasins uh, especially to you know ceremonies powwows and all that that was a big thing and it is a big thing in my culture so um but yeah the earth is is a huge part huge part of uh my culture growing up and it, it still is today before the whole virus and all that did you do grounding a lot like on your own then like did you like recognize the power it had to like potentially like heal you or was it more so just during the pandemic where you kind of found that out no so i've been i found out about grounding a couple years prior to when i started the grounded athlete um and i was an athlete still an athlete at the time mm -hmm. uh time of making recording this but uh i i was just one of those guys i was looking for different ways to uh improve myself to enhance my performance to be a better athlete and you know i i did everything i could possibly do right as an athlete to make myself um good to make myself competitive and i was still i was still getting injured a lot there were a lot of things just popping up and you know whole seasons would get ruined because of these injuries and and other things but uh, just finding a way to mitigate those injuries that was a huge goal of mine and then i uh i stumbled upon grounding and i was just like you know, first I was super skeptical because it's just like, you know, go be barefoot on the earth. That sounds like super, it sounds super hippie. Like I wouldn't, I would, I would be very skeptical if somebody told me that. And, um, from there I was just like, okay, I did a little research. I was like, I'll, I'll start implementing this. And I started sleeping grounded. I started, uh, taking grounded lunch breaks. I would warm up grounded before my training sessions. I would ground in between my reps. Uh, I would, ground post a uh, post workout session and i noticed immediately i just i had more energy i was recovering better uh was sleeping better and overall everything just it got better and i was just like okay i'm a, I'm a believer now and then from there i started to realize there are so many other things that are beyond the performance side of things that grounding can offer people and from there i was hooked i was obsessed with it and so i uh I made it my mission to tell the world about it. So. so what are the other factors besides like 
just the basic stuff that people might think of that grounding can like do for them? Yeah, there is. Uh, so if you're on Twitter, you're on Instagram, you'll, you'll likely stumble across, you know, that picture of red blood cells or something like that, where they're all clumped together. And, you know, there's a lot of individual benefits that you can get from grounding, like the, the Zeta potential, the improved circulation, which is a big one that people talk about. They share, share that one a lot, um, improved HRV and vagal tone. And, and there's, there's a lot, and those are really cool, but it kind of, it misses out on the bigger picture of grounding and what it can do for your body because it's so much greater than these little tiny manifestations of grounding and being connected to the earth. Um, and that's, and that's a big reason I decided to, uh, write, write a book about it because mm -hmm. all these little benefits, they're, they're really cool. And I think they could help a lot of people, but, uh, it goes way further beyond that. Um, you know, there, there's a battery that exists within your body and eventually maybe we can get to that, um, that gets charged when you're grounded. Um, and on top of that, you know, our electrical state is meant to be in, it's meant to be synced up with the earth. So we're meant to be grounded to the earth 24, seven, 365 days a year. And when we're not, when we're insulated through rubber, rubber shoes, uh, being inside, all the time, uh, not being in electrical, electrical contact with the earth, that can really mess with our electrical homeostasis. And when you hear homeostasis, um, you don't really think of the electrical side of things, but your body needs to maintain electrical homeostasis to perform its functions optimally. So uh, yeah, it goes it goes way beyond those, those individual, individual benefits that you see on Twitter and Instagram, like the Zeta potential and the HRV and there's a lot of really cool things beyond that. So if you have any questions like specifically, um, then I'll, I'll do my best to answer how grounding can potentially impact that. When you say grounding, do you strictly mean like feet on the grass or is it, or like whatever the earth, but in general, yeah. like is stuff like getting in the ocean or like in a lake or are there other forms of grounding beyond just the feet on um, yeah, we definitely should have answered. We definitely should have answered that like right off. <laughs> what, what, <laughs> yeah, just what, what it is. is. <laughs> what is grounding? Uh, yeah, so uh, in one sentence, grounding is being in electrical contact with the earth, and you don't have to be in di in direct contact uh, with the earth for that to happen. As long as you're in electrically conductive contact with the earth, that can happen. So that can happen via grounding mats, via grounding sheets. Um, you can be on concrete and you're still grounded. So what it, what it all comes down to is conductivity. You need that charge transfer to happen between your earth and the, the earth and your body. And uh, as long as you're standing on a conductive surface that's in contact with the earth, you're going to be grounded. So like, for example, I get a lot of questions. Am I, am I grounded on the concrete? So concrete is mostly mineral and water. So it is conductive. Uh, electricity can conduct itself through it, especially if you get it wet, that enhances the conductivity. Um, a lot of these grounding or earthing products, um, however you want to say it, these are, are made of conductive materials and they connect to, uh, I don't have an outlet to show you, they connect to that third prong, that little hole at the bottom. Um, and that's connected to the earth outside. Hopefully <laughs> if it's not connected, if it's not connected to the earth outside, then you shouldn't be using those earthing or grounding products. That's really important. Um, but yeah, it's, it's all about being in electrical contact with the earth. That's, uh, that is the whole gist with grounding. And, you know, from there we can, we can close our laptop and move on with our life, but we know that there's a lot, a lot more going on when that happens. So you touched on like the battery in your body. So. Can you just explain like what that means? I don't really yeah. know what that is. That's, you know, that's a whole, that's a whole conversation by itself, but I'll try, I'll, I'll try and summarize it here for you. So when I refer to the matrix and I've made videos about this and when they, and in the book that um, is pretty much done, I, I talk about the matrix, but essentially the matrix is um, this, this big network of proteins in your body. That includes connective tissues, um, the extracellular matrix, the cytoskeleton of cells, um, the nuclear matrices. These are all composed of this 
direct network of proteins. And essentially, it's this highway and this transfer system for energy. Uh, and in our case here, particularly uh, electrical energy. And these, uh, this, this electrical storage system can become depleted when you're insulated. And so when you're grounded, these, elect these free electrons come into your body and they basically saturate this whole matrix. And that can be used for um, a plethora of different, uh, uh, different reasons, um, creation of ATP, um, reducing oxidative stress and neutralizing free radicals. Um, and so it's, it's essentially this network of proteins. And in conjunction with that, you have water. And that's a whole other conversation by itself, too. Mm -hmm. So water in conjunction with this network of proteins creates a battery battery of negative charge and positive charge. And that can be used for powering, um, again, a, a plethora of different processes within the body. But essentially, how this body, how this battery gets charged is through grounding and through sunlight. Um, and you, you might have, you might have heard it, heard of it on kind of esoteric Twitter or whatever, but uh, it's it's called structured water. And that's, that's the kind of water that adheres itself to these protein networks. And when it gets uh, diminished, when you're, when you're insulated and you don't have, when you're not, uh, you're not exposed to sunlight, um, that can have very serious negative uh, health consequences. But um, yeah, I, I talk about that a lot in the book. So, uh, but essentially, yeah, it's, it's, it's a battery that's charged through grounding and through sunlight. When I think about just grounding in general and just the fact that it's like you have to get outside and stuff, a lot of the stuff as far as work and school, just pretty much against that because you're inside for like eight hours. So mm -hmm. what is like the minimum effective dose that you would like recommend and how would you recommend that more people just get these like profound benefits for themselves besides getting some, some grounded shoes so that they can at least yeah. be grounded? Yeah. Uh, and that's, I would say that is question number one that I, that I've, I've gotten since I've started this, how long do I have to ground AKA how little, how little can I get away with? How little yeah. can I get away with to see benefits? And, uh, I'm going to give, I'm going to give like the most annoying answer ever because it depends. It depends on, uh, so in, in a lot of the research that's, that I go over and, and I write about, there's, there's something called inflammatory preparedness. And that's basically how saturated your body's matrix is with electrons. So if, if you've gone, you know, your whole life being insulated, you're going to be extremely uh, electron depleted and you're going to be in a state of low inflammatory preparedness. Um, so it, it just depends on what, what kind of state you are as far as your, electron saturation or depletion levels are. So uh, if you're if you've been insulated for most of your life, you're going to need to ground more on a daily basis. Um, a lot of these studies that that people will talk about on Twitter or Instagram, they range from, you know, instantaneous to two hours to a full night of sleep. But uh, it's important to keep in mind that, you know, your body is meant to be electrically connected to the ground all day, every day, all day. Um, so, you know, the, the short annoying answer to that is it, it depends. It depends on what I, what I said earlier, but, um, something is better than nothing. Getting a little bit every day, I would shoot for like maybe five minutes a day. Uh, 30 minutes a day is pretty popular from, from what I see other people doing. Um, I'm, I'm grounded for, you know, up to 16, 18 hours a day. So I, I make it, uh, a priority in my life. It's, it's basically what my life revolves around. So, uh, that's, that's, that's the really annoying, uh, it depends, it depends answer that a lot of people hate. So when you say sleeping, like grounded, do you just mean like on the actual ground or how do you, like, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not in the soil, dude. Uh, no. um, I sleep on a grounding mat. So uh, that works kind of how I, I told you earlier, connects to that little third prong in your, in your wall outlet, which is connected to the earth outside. You can test that stuff too with a voltmeter or a multimeter. Um, so 
you you would you need before you buy these things i think it's important that you have some uh equipment prior to that you need a an outlet checker you need to know if your if your outlets are properly grounded because that's super important when you're using that stuff um, otherwise you're increasing your risk of potentially an electric shock so you need an outlet checker you need to know if it's properly grounded and then on top of that, you can buy, you know, a voltmeter or um, a multimeter for like five bucks. And that'll tell you if your body's grounded or not. And there, I'm not even going to like attempt to teach you how a, a voltmeter or a multimeter works because I don't have one on me right now. But um, you can look it up on the internet. They're super easy to use and they'll tell you if you're grounded or not. But uh, yeah, I use a grounding mat and uh, I sleep with that underneath me and I get amazing sleep. Mm -hmm. Great sleep with it. So I'm not sleeping directly on the ground, even though uh, uh, I've done it a few times at, on on the res and the reservation for uh, a few ceremonies. But uh, I prefer a bed for, yeah. for a bed. For sure. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so as far as your athletic journey, like and you mm -hmm. said, the injuries were like a big factor in getting you grounded in general. Have you noticed any injuries or? since you started grounding or has your athletic performance been a lot better as far as recovery, um, just output and just in general, like overall performance? Yeah, I've noticed, I, I would say the number one thing I noticed is, is how I felt, um, going definitely, it's definitely how I, how I recovered. I, I felt like the next day after a hard workout, I could repeat that workout. Um, whereas prior to implementing grounding, I would be sore the next day. I would just, I would feel a lot more damaged and banged up. Mm -hmm. And ever since I started doing grounding, I've just felt, uh, like I've had more energy, like I can do more, I can work harder. I can work longer without the, without as much damage being incurred on my body. And there, there is evidence to back that up, but, uh, that's definitely the thing I've noticed the most um but i'll you know i notice if i spend a lot of time you know just barefoot walking around before my workout too my workouts go amazing like uh i i feel very energized i feel like the workout just goes really really smooth so mm. yeah is that even if like you just walk around barefoot or like with the sandals on and then you like switch into like normal shoes it still has the same <clears throat> effect or is it yeah you find more uh, power if you're like using like bare feet or the sandals, like while you're actually working out. So it's um, it, it depends on on where I'm at, what kind of training I'm doing. So I I do I do mixed martial arts and then I do the uh, I do track too. So I compete in track. Track was my my first love, and I still compete in that. So unfortunately, the track is rubber, so yeah. I'm not able to train grounded. And so what I'll do is. Um, in, in between the interval, I will take my spikes off. And for the one to five minutes that I have in between reps, I'll walk around, you know, in the middle of the track or around the track on the grass, pop my spikes back on and then do, do the next rep. When I'm training indoors, I'll bring a grounding mat with me. I'll do the same thing. I'll pop my spikes off. Uh, I'll stand on the ground mat for two, three minutes, and then I'll jump back into the workout. Uh, I'll do the same thing with lifting in between reps, um, which I know it kind of sounds like a hassle, but it's not that bad. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, it's just wherever I'm at, I, I make sure that uh, I'm able to at least get it in before or in between or, or after my workout. So. so yeah, so this grounding is something where it's not just something you find that, I don't know, like benefits you, but it's like literally like a part of like everything you do. Like you said, 16 to 18 hours. So even yeah. when you're just walking around, you have the barefoot, uh, not the bare, I mean the sandals on and that's considered good enough to be grounded. Yeah. Yeah. And even, you know, even when I'm working in my garage, I'm making sandals and stuff, I'm grounded then my garage mm -hmm. is, my garage floor is concrete. So I'm on that. I'm, I'm grounded, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's a huge part of my life. It's, it's, it's what I preach. So, you know, I obviously have to, I have to prioritize that in my life because then who would I be? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's super important. I think you have to, you have to live the lifestyle that you want others to implement. So I'm, I'm doing my best to, to do that. What correlation do you think, um, if any, between like you getting into grounding and like the pandemic coming out and being a time when people are just inside in general and 
just not connecting with others. I don't know if that's considered, it's not really considered grounding, but it seems like it's pretty essential to connect with others. And that was something where you're pretty much forced to wear a mask and stay inside Mm -hmm. and try to get a vaccine if you want to travel. So it's like, I don't know, just in general, it's that during that time specifically, if I had to guess the average person was probably not getting even close to enough grounded grounding time. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's, it was, it was a really weird time too, because like they were telling you to stay inside. Like I, I didn't understand that aspect of it. Like, why are you wanting people to stay inside? Like it's way healthier for people to be outside in nature, breathing fresh air, um, on the earth and you know you don't necessarily have to be close to people for that you know for people to do that um but um yeah i don't it i think i guess the, the positive thing out of that is that you know people were staying home and they were able to be around their loved ones more often um which is great uh and they they could a lot of people use that time to really think about their health, you know, and it, it was a, it was a wake up call for a lot of people because a lot of people that were, were dying from COVID were fat and they were very unhealthy people. And so that was a, that was a, a transformative time for a lot of people that were just like, okay, I, I need to t- start taking my health more seriously. And hopefully during that time, a lot of people found out about grounding and, and why it's, it's important. And, you know, there's a lot of real, cool research um, as far as grounding and, and uh, viral viral infections as far as uh, improving that that immune response to it but uh, yeah I think that was that was a good time for people to really reflect on what they can do um, positively for for their health so hopefully many people walked away with that um, with with grounding as a new new technique a new tool in their toolbox so. yeah have you ever kind of been into or did you ever follow like the traditional like med- medicine or like procedures that people recommended or are you always like kind of interested in like alternative things because I know for me before I started on this health journey I kind of just followed what people said but once I realized that a lot of the times it just doesn't work or it just doesn't work for me I found other options and just in general like Twitter is just such a great way to get um, information that you wouldn't have otherwise because if you just look up on uh google it's probably not going to show up about the effects of grounding or i I, it might but just in general like there's these alternative procedures or alternative stuff that's not widely adopted yet but it seems like it's the future as far as Mm -hmm. i'm concerned yeah i i like many other people will always prefer a natural alternative method to let's say pharmacological methods, pills, stuff like that. Um, but it's, it's very important. Um, so the happy, the happy medium is right in the middle. You want a good mix of, of conventional, of conventional medicine mixed with alternative medicine. I feel like you don't want to throw away your doctor completely. There's, there's, there's really, yeah, they, you break your leg or something like that. <laughs> you know, well, it's, you know, you don't want if you, got cancer or diabetes, you know, you probably don't want to be messing around with crystals too much. Like you probably want to be seeking medical, medical attention for that. Um, but if, if you have something that can be alleviated with, uh, alternative natural methods, you definitely want to shoot for that. So I think the happy medium is like, right, right in the middle, you utilize your doctor. You also utilize other people, you utilize the internet. There's a lot of really, really cool alternative methods out there that you can use to heal your body so uh, right in the middle i think is where where you want to be um but i'm definitely with you i will always prefer something natural that i can get from the earth um with you know without taking something uh, of, of pharma pharmacological means um something super synthetic in, in a pill form or something like that so with that is like your diet approach um as far as what you put in your body is that like a main component to it and um like do you try to eat grounded as well or like actually Um, like on the grass or (laughs) outside at least well now that you bring that up that would be really important to do because um you know when you're when your body's stressed you can't digest things 
properly. So it, it, it that would be a big benefit to eating eating grounded. Um, but uh, most of the time, I, I get I, I'm inside. I'm eating. Uh, I'm eating insulated. <laughs> so, mm. but uh, diet. I mean, diet, it's 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 pretty. So I'm I'm a performance athlete. So I've got to got to watch what I'm putting in my body. I'm not as strict as other people. I like my carbs. Um, mm. I like I like some sweets every now and then, and uh, I think they. They make me feel good. They make me feel good in my workouts. Uh, so every once in a while, uh, I'll treat myself. But uh, for the most part, I'm just I'm eating whole foods. I'm eating meat. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm eating some vegetables. I used to be super against vegetables, but I eat them now. Um, I'm just not as much, not as much of them. Um, but uh, I eat a lot of fruits. So, but yeah, diets diets been a, a big big staple for me as far as as far as locking that down so that way I can perform to the best of my ability. For the sandals in general, how did you learn how to make those and kind of like scale that into like a business that you can do for yourself? Yeah. So I spent, I spent about three months, uh, throwing things together. Um, and it was a really pain in the ass three months. Um, so right now from, from start to finish, it'll take me like, 30 minutes to, to bang out one pair. And that's, um, uh, that's, it's, it's manual labor. It's a lot of work to, to get those things made. Um, so there was a, about a three month, uh, three month process where I was just throwing things together and, and I would, you know, I'd spend three hours on, on one pair and then I'd have to throw it out because it didn't work. So that was super annoying, but, um, stuck with it. And, and three months later it, it came out to be something pretty cool. And you, you can see on the Instagram how it developed over time. If you go all the way back, it's it's really cool to look at that. Even for me, it just kind of it's nice. It's it's humbling to see uh, to see those beginnings. But um, yeah, once once I got them uh, ready and I and I tested them uh, with a voltmeter, I was like, okay, these things work. So now you know I can I can teach people about this really cool practice of grounding, and I can also offer them something too something that can keep them grounded when it's not always practical to be grounded. Let's say they're on like, you know, kind of sketchy terrain, you know, there's, there's shit on the ground, there's glass <laughs> and whatever not. And uh, so now, now that they, they can wear something and be, and be grounded and, and know they're grounded because um, I, I spent a lot of time to make sure these things, these things work and, and they're high quality. So, um, but yeah, in I've, I've, I've made a lot of those things and I've shipped them all over the world, man. Like I, I think I'm at like 60 countries now, but and that's a, that's a good feeling. You know, it's, it means a lot of people trust me, trust me with uh, what they're putting on their feet. And that's, that's a good feeling. It's also a lot of responsibility, but um, it's been, it's been fun. I don't know. I forgot what your initial question was, but I kind of like trailed off a little bit. <laughs> I don't even remember, but. Uh, I was going to say, so you actually took the time to use the voltmeter and make sure that these things were grounded. Were they ever like yeah. coming out and just not being grounded? And then you were like having to tinker with it a lot. So I'll test one. I'll test one from each batch. So I'll do a batch a week and then I'll test one with the voltmeter. And they're all like to a T pretty much made like this the, the exact same way um there's there's hardly any as far, like maybe there's differences in like the the leather and stuff that's that's on the footbed but as far as you know how they're made you know i've i've made like over three thousand pairs of these things so they're all made to a t so i trust if one is grounded they're all grounded but i'll test one from each batch with a voltmeter and you have the I don't know if you could talk about this but i saw something about the aries ground wear is that like your next <laughs> section next yeah. product line pretty much yeah. i don't know if you could talk about that <clears throat> absolutely um aries aries was conceptualized before gaia was was even a thing and that was i want to make a shoe a shoe that grounds you and i want to not only do i want to make a shoe that grounds you i want it to not be ugly <laughs> um I, and i want it to be in the same aesthetic that you know i have all of my other stuff which is kind of that greek that greek mythology uh aesthetic and that's that's what gaia is gaia is the greek goddess of goddess of the earth and aries is the the greek god of war and so that that kind of that that symbolism is that uh, it's it's war with with insulating insulating souls 
So um, I, I worked with a designer out of New York and uh, got something got something made, uh, a prototype, and it's it's the first it's the first grounding shoe that utilizes this kind of technique. I'm not going to talk too much about that, um, but it's the only grounding shoe that that utilizes this grounding system. Um, so here's the thing, though, I've got it made, but shoes are really expensive. So what's likely going to end up happening is I'm going to try and crowdfund it. If it doesn't work, hey, that's okay. I tried, and it, it's it's uh, and that's that's the most important thing. But I think. I think a lot of people will want to invest in something like that because, you know, grounding shoes do exist, but a lot of them are just kind of like, uh, like they're a little ugly. Um, mm. So, and I, I wanted a cool, a cool sneaker, cool everyday sneaker that you could wear that's, that's grounded. And that's what a lot of people are looking for because a lot of people will message me. They're like, Hey, I'm not a sandal guy. Like uh, I'm a shoe guy. So if you ever get a shoe, you know, I'm down, I'll buy it. <laughs> so that's been a big, that's been a big goal of mine for the past three years. I've been working on Aries for like three years now. Um, I think I said two years earlier, but it was actually like three years, like bef before I even started the business, I wanted to figure out how to make that shoe. But um, it's been an ongoing process. It's been a pain in the ass process, but I know it'll pay off eventually. So with the making of the book, like where did you find all the research on grounding in general? Yeah, it's so it's all over the place. It's scattered. Um, there are some websites that will have like a list of them, but uh, a lot of them are scattered all over the internet. And uh, some of them you have to buy, because you have to buy them for some reason. And I totally get that. You gotta, you gotta, you know, these, uh, these, these academic uh, databases, they need, they need uh, financial, they need to be sp sponsored somehow. They need to make money somehow, somehow. So some of them you have to buy, but yeah, essentially they're scattered all over the internet. So uh, I did my best to make my own list on my website. And so I that that's probably the most comprehensive list as far as the peer reviewed stuff, um, the academic stuff. Um, so that's on my website under the research tab. But uh, yeah, it, you know, a big goal with me writing that book is just like, I want to learn more about grounding, but I don't want to go to 15 fucking websites to, <laughs> to find out how, how it works exactly. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to write this book. This is going to be the most comprehensive book you can, you can get as the most comprehensive source of information on grounding that you could possibly get anywhere. And I very much believe that I've done that The book's pretty much done. Um, I've illustrated it. Um, I've, I've read it front to back multiple times. It's, it's, it's a, it's a good mix of kind of textbook style because it's, it's gotta be academic. 